Hello everyone. Myself Vina Sadapat and I have a bachelor's degree in dentistry and a master's degree in public health. And I have been associated with academic writing and my all the tutor since the past one and a half years. Okay, so we begin today's topic, which is alcoholic liver disease. It is a very common condition that we see in chronic alcoholics and in patients who have consumed alcohol over a longer period of time. And uh, We'll study and discuss its clinical presentation, its management, and why it happens and how it occurs. So let's begin. Okay, first of all, what is alcoholic liver disease? So basically, alcoholic liver disease, as the name suggests, is that there is damage to the liver due to alcohol consumption. So in simple terms, we can call it a damage to the liver and damage to its functioning that is related to chronic alcohol consumption or any kind of use of alcohol, which is known as alcoholic liver disease. And it is not a basic thing. It is not a single thing or a single entity. It is basically a progressive condition where there is a spectrum of histological conditions which develop in stages. It begins and then it goes ahead um, in two stages, which leads to the final development of alcoholic liver disease. The major cause is considered to be alcohol consumption. These stages could start from steatotis or basically fatty liver and lead on to alcoholic hepatitis, which is then followed by cirrhosis, which is the last stage. So the major cause here, again, as the name suggests, is consumption of alcohol, excessive consumption of alcohol. So what is the definition of excessive consumption of alcohol that is leading to alcoholic liver disease around the world? Uh, what is considered is that a chronic consumption is considered ranging from 30 to 50 grams per day and 60 to 80 grams per day for men and women respectively. And it can increase the risk of development of alcoholic cirrhosis of liver. If the consumption is 30 to 50 grams per day for women and 60 to 80 grams per day for men respectively, uh, or anything in the range of this or greater than that can cause development of alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver. It is a risk, highest risk factor. The most prevalent type of chronic liver disease is alcoholic liver disease. The most common liver disease is alcoholic liver disease with the most common cause alcohol consumption. Around 21.5 million years of life are lost due to ALD in the year 2016 and men are known to be more affected than women because of the increased alcohol consumption as compared to women. Comparatively, the alcohol consumption in men is greater than women and therefore the, uh, the prevalence of ALD or the notion of ALD has more or greater in, of development chances are greater in men as compared to women. So what is the etiology and the pathogenesis behind this development of alcoholic liver disease? Basically, the most common and the major risk factor is the excessive and chronic alcohol consumption, more than 40 grams per day generally, leads to the development of ALD and cirrhosis of the liver consequently. There are two major pathways that are followed for the uh, thing, for the etiology and the pathogenesis of alcoholic liver. First, uh, first pathway is alcohol dehydrogenase and the other one is cytochrome P450. So what happens is when we consume alcohol, is ethanol it is metabolized in the body following two pathways that is alcohol dehydrogenase and cytochrome p450 so in either of the two pathways when this metabolism of alcohol takes place it leads to the development of alcoholic liver disease and i'll explain to you how first of all we'll look into the uh, pathway of alcohol dehydrogenase adh where the metabolism of ethanol occurs what happens is uh, when this alcohol dehydrogenase acts on ethanol, it is, uh, causes an increase in the production of NADH from the NAD positive that is present in the body due to the reactions that have been catalyzed by both alcohol dehydrogenase and ADH2 enzymes. So when there is ethanol in the body, it is metabolized using the enzymes ADH and ADH2. They catalyze these reactions uh, which convert is, converts the NADH Mm, production from NAD plus. Basically, the production of NADH increases from NAD plus and therefore the ratio, does the normal ratio of NAD plus is to NADH, it decreases and uh, in the hepatocyte. Therefore, the cellular redox potential, which is the ratio of NAD plus to NADH ratio, that decreases because of increased accumulation of NADH. Because of increased metabolism of ethanol in the body by alcohol dehydrogenase and ADH2. Both of these enzymes, they work over time uh, to metabolize the extra ethanol that has come into the body and this metabolism leads to an increased production of NADH. Therefore, the potential, the redox potential of NAD positive is to NADH, that ratio, it gets reduced. And this decrease in this ratio basically leads to changes in the metabolic pathway from oxidative to reductive synthesis. 
therefore the pathway entirely changes from oxidative pathway to a reductive pathway which leads to the formation of fatty acids in the hepatocytes all of this is happening in the hepatocyte cell of the liver which leads to fatty acid accumulation in the liver and ultimately leading to fatty liver so first pathway of the metabolism of ethanol as described by as described here is this the other pathway that is there is the cytochrome p450 pathway which is an inducible enzyme that means its production increases with increased consumption of ethanol therefore more the alcohol consumed by the individual more is the release of this enzyme and then the formation of acetaldehyde and subsequent production of nad positive which again leads to fatty acid formation even in the hepatocyte as told you in the previous slide further consumption of alcohol leads to development of end stage liver disease associated with greater production of acetaldehyde and subsequent fibrosis and cirrhosis of the liver so now this acetaldehyde directly causes fibrogenesis by increasing the collagen production in the hepatic stellate cells of the liver they are also activated by the damaged hepatocytes activated kupffer cells and neutrophils via the various fibrogenic mediators such as tgf growth factor leptin and il8 so basically what happens is uh, the more the consumption of alcohol the more the production of the cytochrome p450 cyp2 e1 enzyme greater is the production greater is the formation of acetaldehyde when there is greater formation of acetaldehyde it has to go down for this thing for metabolism for its metabolism what happens is it releases the production of nad positive which causes fatty acid accumulation and formation within the hepatocyte also this acetaldehyde that is formed it directly causes fibrogenesis by increasing the production of collagen in the hepatic cells of the liver so there are two things that are happening it is also leading to increased fatty acid formation and accumulation in the liver it is also leading to increased collagen collagen production within the hepatic cells of the liver therefore uh, the hepatocytes get damaged due to increased collagen production and increased fatty acid formation and then as a process they are activated also by these damaged hepatocytes this is a vicious cycle then then it also gets these damaged hepatocytes also activate these kupffer cells and neutrophils and fibrogenic mediators to increase the collagen production so it is then it becomes a vicious cycle moving on so what are the factors that modulate the progression of this alcoholic liver disease first of all is the pattern of alcohol consumption and type the type of beverage and the pattern and the amount of drinking affects the development of ald more specifically the problem of alcohol abuse amongst people in the australian context if we look at it uh, around 17% of the population consumed alcohol at a risky level in the year and around 36% of the people taking drug treatment took it for alcohol addiction in the year missing making alcohol abuse and related disorders a problem basically the pattern of alcohol consumption and type is one major factor that modulates the progression of alcoholic liver disease apart from the other factors such as gender and nutritional factors also gender also affects by higher blood concentration levels of alcohol in women as compared to men after consumption of the same amount of alcohol makes them more susceptible to development of ald that is if both male and female gender they consume alcohol 20 ml each but after that consumption in if we check the same amount of alcohol the concentration levels in the blood the alcohol concentration level in the blood in the females is greater than in males so it makes them more susceptible but overall when we look at it because there are greater number of men indulging in behavior that is risky behavior of drinking and alcohol drinking it puts them at a greater risk nutritional factors such as high fat diet act as a modifier for ald and lifestyle associated changes such as obesity smoking and drug use also have a significant impact on the development and modulation of ald so nutritional factors may are high eating a high fat diet cholesterol all of that obesity along with smoking they are all high risk factors for development of alcoholic liver disease for the progression of fatty liver which can then convert to ald and cirrhosis and subsequent